Entrepreneurs, there is a new skill on the block and it's called prompt engineering. Now, in the dawn of this new AI era, your success is directly related to the way and the skill with which you can manipulate technologies such as ChatGPT. Today, I'm gonna to give you some tips for getting the most out of this large language model. Hint for you, it's a large language model, so the tips are all related to language. How beautiful is that? For me, as a non-coder, as a non-techie, that is music to my ears. So the thought of code and Python and all of these things makes me come out in a cold sweat. To know that I can manipulate language, simple words, simple phrases, and get outstanding results from this technology just blows my mind. And so I am delighted to share with you ways that you very simply, very efficiently can manipulate ChatGPT to get some outstanding outputs, to get some outstanding things from this beautiful technology. Let's dive in. Hey, I'm Colin, I'm an AI marketing coach, and I love sharing my learning journey with ChatGPT, AI technologies, and applying these to the world of marketing where I've done my 10,000 hours. Today, we're gonna to look at prompt engineering inside of ChatGPT. In its simplest format, prompt engineering is the text that you put into the ChatGPT text interface. And we're talking about the input output. So we put text in, we get text out. In its simplest format, that's how ChatGPT works right now. Prompt engineering is the way that we put that text in, and it's all about language. The better you engineer your prompts, the more that you understand how prompting works, the better infinitely that your responses are going to be. Just by learning the very basics of prompt engineering, you will be in the top 1% of users in the world in terms of your ability to get the best out of this platform. Let's run through 11 ways to level up your game when it comes to prompt engineering in ChatGPT. The first is to be clear and specific. Make your prompt as clear and unambiguous as possible. Specify the desired format, tone, and output that you want from ChatGPT. Instead of saying write a blog post on productivity, ask ChatGPT to write an informative blog post giving three productivity tips for remote workers. Can you see the difference? How we've added clarity and specificity. This is critical when it comes to engineering prompts that get better results. Provide context. The more context you can give ChatGPT, the better the results are going to be. So rather than say, write an email to my subscribers list, launching my new product, you can give context. We are an eco-friendly company, write an email promoting our latest X product that does Y and is targeted at environmentally conscious consumers. Can you see the difference? Can you see how we've given context to the technology? This way, it knows it has a frame of reference. So in everything that you do and say, always try and elaborate on that frame of reference, on that context that you give to ChatGPT. Consider the way that you phrase your questions as well. Rather than say, what are the benefits of product X, which is quite an open-ended question, and leaves ChatGPT free to roam into, the, into its depths of knowledge and come back with a response that it deems relevant, it's very rarely going to yield the results that you want. If we were to say, list the top five benefits of product X for busy professionals, then can you see how what that's doing is it's narrowing the field and providing context gives ChatGPT a frame of reference, a place to work with in which it can give you infinitely better results. In context setting, I like to use a little trick like assuming the role of. So I always ask ChatGPT to assume the role of a world-class direct response copywriter, assume the role of a marketing expert, for example context always yields better results. Anchor your prompts with examples. Again, linked to what we've just spoken about around context, if you can give ChatGPT examples, this provides a framework that it can work its magic from. So let's say we're looking for a catchy slogan for our business and we're a sports brand and we say, hey, can you help me create a catchy slogan similar to Nike's Just Do It? So now we've given ChatGPT again that frame of reference, and this is what it's all about. You'll see a common theme through all of these tips. It's about giving ChatGPT that frame of reference, 
so that it can work its magic and give you the best possible results. Another thing that's really interesting to do is to constrain ChatGPT so we can guide it, we can corral it. We can also constrain it so it's possible to say to ChatGPT, give me a response that is maximum 30 words long. This is really useful because it allows you to add constraints to the prompts. So you can ask ChatGPT to limit its number of words. You can ask ChatGPT to limit its number of characters. And this can often be really fruitful in giving you much more concise, much more usable information from the technology. And it doesn't end there. You can add to those constraints. You can ask ChatGPT to write you a 30 word product review that includes the words innovative, reliable, durable, and then ChatGPT will work those words into the results that it gives you. So hopefully you're seeing how your ability to manipulate these prompts makes all of the difference. Breaking things down step by step is also a very powerful way to engineer prompts that get better results because ChatGPT inside of the thread, the chat that you're in right now, it remembers what's gone on previously. Having step by step prompts causes ChatGPT to consider the information that came before. Let's take a marketing offer, for example. We can't create a marketing offer, a compelling offer, a product, without first understanding who our target audience is. And so we can have this built into our prompts. We can say, define the avatar for this product, for this niche, for this specific outcome. And then step two, build the desires and pains of this specific avatar. And then step three, create the offer. So rather than just say create the offer for, we can break this down even further into step by step. So we can say, first define the avatar for this. We're constraining, we're corralling the technology. And then break down even further the pains and the problems of this target avatar. And then create the offer matching these pains and problems. Can you see how much more powerful that is? It's infinitely better. It's so much better and you will get so much better results as a result. So experiment by breaking these things down into step by step. Keep it simple to start with. Just give ChatGPT a series of simple prompts and watch the magic happen. You can encourage multiple alternatives. One of the things I like to do when I'm coming up with ideas for headlines is I will say, suggest three alternative headlines for write me five examples, write me 20 titles for this blog post. You're manipulating and playing with a language model here. And so therefore it will pay you dividends to experiment, to try a short prompt, try a longer prompt, try a prompt in the middle, try a ridiculously long prompt, try a ridiculously short prompt, play with these different things and see how that affects the outputs. Iterative prompting is so powerful. This is your ability to put a prompt into ChatGPT to get an output and then to play from there. Because remember, it learns and knows everything that you've done previously. And this is how you train ChatGPT. And often the third output is infinitely better than the first. Let's say, for example, we asked ChatGPT to outline the top five problems faced by our target audience. We can follow up with an iterative prompt that asks out of all of these, which is the most prevalent in our target audience. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about the pain and frustration of my avatar experiencing in this scenario. Tell me more about the pain and frustration my ideal clients experience in X. And now we can begin to unpick the responses that ChatGPT brings out by using this approach of iteration, of iterative prompting. You don't have to be satisfied with the first thing that you see. That's the beauty of this. The possibilities are infinite. You can continually ask for new regenerations of the same. So play with the input, iterate, always unpick and dive in to those results a little deeper. Review and edit. So just like prompting is iterative and you can keep going on down the rabbit hole with this, review and edit the content that comes out, make it your own, add your brand voice, I speak more friendly than that. I am more conversational. I like to express emotions in my language. And this is a way that you can iterate and move the output closer to what it is and how it is that you would speak and take the outputs as a foundation for creating something special and unique that is yours. And on that theme, test and iterate. 
always refine, always edit, always iterate. You really have to put your white lab coat on and get playing in the lab with this. You have to be playful, like a child. You really have to have playful curiosity to get the most out of this tool. And it's about being playful and always asking for more, always looking to improve, be better, learn from that experimentation, modify the prompts that you use, and keep getting better and better at manipulating ChatGPT. So there you have it, some tips and techniques for crafting effective prompts with ChatGPT. I hope you found these tips helpful and you start implementing them in your business right away. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more AI marketing related videos. Please feel free to share this video with others who might find it useful. I'll see you next time.